All right, as we await the uh, three additional remaining leaders, we know that they spent hours with their debate prep teams ahead of tonight's debate. Let's turn now to a few people who've actually been on the coaches bench. Michelle Cadario has worked uh, with former Prime Minister Paul Martin and former British Columbia Premier Christy Clark. She's now the CEO of Vanguard Strategy and she's in Vancouver. Carl Belanger worked with former NDP leaders Jack Layton and Thomas Mulcair, and he is the president of Traction Strategies. And Ian Plant uh, worked with former Prime Minister Stephen Harper. He's now the vice president of Tact Conseil. They are both in Gatineau, Quebec. All right, as we uh, await the next arrivals, which we'll uh, put into the picture, as soon as we see them, want to go inside the room. What kind of preparation get done today and in the days in advance of it? Ian, we'll start with you. So, uh, look, as of today, the leader and their team know already about the, the debate format. They know exactly when uh, each leader is going to oppose another one and, and what kind of uh, attack they want to deliver and when and what kind of message. So, for today, it's a bit of simulation. Most of it has been done yesterday. Uh, so it's just, uh, you know, perfectioning some of the delivery and with always the uh, overarching goal to be uh, to bring the leader in a good state of mind for the debate. So we do things that the leader wants to do, even if it's just rehearse a little bit or, or just uh, have some chit chats with, with his team. But everything is done uh, in order to ensure that the leader is looking forward for the debate. Uh, Michelle, the the um, Anglophone leaders in the room are at something of a disadvantage in that those who are native French speakers can just get so much more out and are much more comfortable. We saw Aaron O'Toole before the TVA debate last week immersing himself with just the French speaking members of his staff. Is that something that is likely to be helpful and, uh, and happening? And as you answer, I will just point out that we have another vehicle arriving. We'll try to put it into our picture. So Michelle, if you can answer that and I might cut you off. Sure, no problem. Yeah, it is. It's really important that, you know, as uh, as he was saying, you have to get the head leader into the right headspace. And so if what they need is to completely immerse themselves in that language for, for the 24 hours beforehand, then, then that's who you surround them with. It's about making sure that they're comfortable and confident. All the prep in terms of the material and everything that they, that and you know, the one-liners, the zingers, the offense and defense, all of that strategy should have, should have been well prepared for before today. Today is all about headspace and making sure that um, that you're ready to walk into that um, into that forum. Um, and if it's a second language for you, yep. then uh, you know you want to be practicing the colloquialisms and and some of the slang and uh, and making sure that your ear is really attuned to it. I'm just going to pop in on you for a second, Michelle. We uh, just watched Aaron O'Toole, the Conservative Party leader, heading in. He uh, did not make any comments, as Yves Francois Blanchet and Jagmeet Singh did on their way in. Brief comments, uh, though they may have been. Uh, he headed straight into the debate site, waved at uh, the assembled cameras and journalists there. And if you're wondering what the sound is in the background, there are protesters outside. Uh, there's also some supporters from different groups and a very large security presence. Carl, because tonight is the French language debate, it, it can in many ways be a lot about appealing to Quebecers. Do parties consider um, the French speakers who are outside of Quebec or the English speakers who will see this in social media and in other forums? Uh, they do, but it's obviously not not the main target. Uh, in terms of the French uh, speaking seats uh, elsewhere in the country, there are a few that are in play, but most of them are not really in play for most leaders. So of course the focus is on Quebec, uh, but you know there's there's an influence on the English uh, voters as well, for sure. But they need to stay focused on where the prize is, and the prize tonight is those Quebec voters who will tune in. Uh, some of them may have tuned into the TVA debate last week, but that debate did not really change the needle. It didn't really move it. So tonight, there's another opportunity for the the, the, the the leaders to do that, especially for if Francois Blanchet, who did well last week, but did not create the impression he created in 2019 during that first French debate. Ian, what does it take to move that needle tonight? If the TVA debate did not do it, what could do it in these French language debates tonight? What did they learn from last week that they could use this week? 
Well, every every leader have different objectives and needs, of course. Some are greater and, and some others are more realistic. So uh, I always look at this in the lens of, of the objectives for each leader. So if you take, for instance, Mr. O'Toole, uh, his objectives are, are just realistic. Like he wants to keep his 10 seats and maybe make some inroads, but... So, so he needs to be, again, uh, someone who looks prime ministerial and talk about this plan. When you have uh, Mr. Trudeau, who actually needs probably to win some more seats and, and be closer to 40 seats and 35 in Quebec, he needs to talk with you know, emotions to, to Quebecers a lot because uh, people vote with, with their emotion way more than uh, with their brain. Mm -hmm. Michelle, some of the topics tonight include cost of living, public finances, climate, pandemic and healthcare. How do you anticipate what could be asked by moderators? Because you, you don't know what the moderators, what the journalists there are going to ask specifically. And how do you defend against attacks from the other leaders? Well, typically, you know, the work for to prep for the debate has been happening for a good year. And, uh, you know, what we use is a huge binder. And really, you have teams of people who are just thinking of every possible um, question that uh, that maybe your leader's gotten on the road, that uh, that other campaigns are talking about. You've combed through the platforms and the policy positions of the other campaigns as well. Um, and really just, you know, try and think of absolutely everything that you can and every angle that you can uh, in terms of how the question comes. But more importantly, though, is, is the answers. And you're not going to have a thousand answers. You're going to have a few set answers because you have to have the, you have to de decide what do you want to get across? When you're talking about housing affordability, what is your main answer, no matter how the question is phrased? Um, and, uh, and so you have to have those kinds of five pockets as we have the five themes and really set out and know exactly what you want to achieve and then how you want to turn on your opponent. And that's what all the practice sessions are all about. Carl, we were watching um, a, a short time ago the Jack Layton on Michael Ignatieff attack line, the zinger line, where he said uh, he questioned his attendance record in the House of Commons and said, uh, you know, most people, most Canadians who uh, go to a job don't get a promotion if they don't show up. How do you come up with those zinger lines? <laughs> Um, well, it, it usually comes up in the in the debate prep when you do simulation, um, uh, and uh, you know I, I I've been saying that I've had a lot of experience to playing Gilles Duceppe over the years, so much so that I probably could have replaced him. And as Gilles Duceppe, I was trying a lot of lines, uh, and I was trying a lot of things, and some mm -hmm. of the time uh, the, the lines would stick, and we would take them and give them to Jack, for instance. Uh, for him to use. So you try them and you see what the, the effect is in the room. Do people like it? Can you fine tune it? And is the leader comfortable with it? It's because of course, you know, you can rehearse lines as much as you want. If it doesn't come out naturally, then it's a dud and it's a wasted opportunity. Yeah, and same, same question around the idea of zingers. Are they the critical things or is it about overall performance? Oh, they are critical because, um, and, and especially I would say with, with, with time goes, because uh, there, there's more and more uh, uh, prep and, and, and it almost become a profession to, to prepare our leaders. And so, so as uh, we've said previously, they, they know the attacks that are coming. And, 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 and one, of the, one of the fight is to, to ensure you have some quotes that are good for news cycle and for social media. So they, they, they prepare them a lot and they want, they want them to be at, at the news and, and the, the day after and on, so, on social media for weeks. So, uh, they, you know, it, it's part of it and it, it's, uh, it, it's one of the most important part of debate prep, actually. Michelle, I'll wrap up with you and just asking briefly what you're looking ahead to. What do you think is going to land tonight? Well, I think that, you know, each leader has a different objective and depending on how they've, uh, how they've prepped, um, it's, it will, we'll kind of see. I think Mr. for Mr. Trudeau, he has to be strong. He has to answer uh, why this election and what is at stake and what, so, so why now? I think for Mr. O'Toole, he's got to kind of clean up all of his, uh, his flip flops, uh, and, uh, be definitive in terms of some of his policy positions. Um, because it's going to, people are going to be looking for consistency, particularly with debates back to back. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Mr. Singh wants to um, somehow make sure that he's relevant 
and that uh, that the offering that he's making is um, is uh, is something that Canadians can vote for. But at the same time, he doesn't want to uh, go after Mr. O'Toole because it's to his benefit. And for Mr. Blanchet, he needs to he wants to be the um, uh, he wants to be speaking for Quebec. He wants to be the leader there that that has um, uh, the province's interest top of mind uh, and that he can kind of show contrast with everyone else. And so uh, uh, we'll see who, who actually um, achieves their objectives, but um, it's, uh, there's a lot at stake for all of them. All right. Michelle, Carl, Quickly, yeah. Quickly, about yeah. enemy Paul, right? Enemy yeah, Paul, let's not forget, she's there tonight. She's there tonight, and it's our only opportunity probably of this campaign to speak to French Canadians, so she needs to give it at all. Yeah, absolutely. This is the first time, in fact, that she's left the greater Toronto area in the entire campaign. Yeah. So there you have it. OK, thanks very much to the three of you. Certainly appreciate your insights. You've done this before. We'll see how it uh, all plays out in uh, well, a little more than 30 minutes time. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.